How did Jesus, because they how had, Jesus knew they believed? They have believed. How did Jesus okay, knew that? Okay. okay, I don't know about that, sir. Sorry. Very uh, simple. Very simple. You activate your faith by word words that you speak. How did okay. Jesus knew they had faith? Because of the words they spoke. So okay. God wants to give you the key right now to activate the faith, the revelation of faith you received now. It is being okay. activated by what you say with your mouth, with your words. Yes, sir. And that's how Jesus recognized who had faith, who didn't. Okay. So simple truth, simple key. Every yeah. word that you speak, either you're activating your faith or you're activating fear or unbelief. Okay. And you're attracting God's miracle and favor or you are staying in doubt. So that is a simple, simple revelation that anybody can practice. Everybody has faith. You know, yes, like you said, we receive Christ into our hearts and we have faith, but now we have to activate it by what we speak. So thank okay. you for sharing that. Welcome everyone. Thank you. We have an exciting day today. I can't wait. We have a team of people. But before that, let's pray. And I have something to share with you. Holy Spirit has been downloading something into my spirit, man. And it's going to be a blessing. God wants to be your strength. That's the first thing he wants to share with us today. Everybody say, God is my strength. God is my strength. God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart. That is the strength of my heart. Of my life. Of my life. Thank Father, you, we thank you for this morning, thank this you. afternoon, this evening that we come before you from different parts of this world, different countries. Thank you, Father, for my your ecclesia family. Lord Jesus, you said you will build your ecclesia and the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Lord, we invite you to come and build your ecclesia the way you want it, according to the blueprint, according to your design. I thank you for my brothers and sisters who have joined, Father. I thank you for the speakers for today. I thank you for anointing their mouth. Thank you for the words that are going to come. Something supernatural will happen in our hearts, in our life today, Father. We bless you. We give you all the glory and praise. Thank you for all that you have done so far in our life. Last week, you kept us safe from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. I thank you for your protection and your strength over. I speak strength to everyone who is feeling weak in their mind, in their spirit, in their body. God is your strength. Like David said, God is the strength of my life. He's the fortress. He's my defense. He's my rock. I thank you for speaking to us, Father. I bless you, people. I thank you for revelation of that kingdom. And we give you all the glory and praise for what you're doing. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. <laughs> you know, this kingdom life starts and begins with revelation. You know, it doesn't start with a miracle. It doesn't start with, you know, something we do. Kingdom living starts with a revelation. That's why Jesus did not start his ministry with feeding the hungry, you know, free food for everybody. That was not his message. That's not how Jesus began. He fed the hungry two times that we read in the New Testament. And when he started preaching to the people in Matthew chapter 6, you know, he said, do not worry about life. Do not worry about what you're going to eat, where you're going to live, where, what you're going to wear. You remember these people. These people mm -hmm. were living under the oppression of Rome. And then he said, look at the birds of the air. Jesus, what are you saying? We are hungry. We are broke. We are living under the oppression of Rome. What are you trying to tell us by saying, look at the birds of the air. Our property has been taken by Rome. We have no rights, no human rights, no freedom. We can't own any property, no food. Our children are hungry and you're telling us, look at the birds. <laughs> Why don't you give us some food, some free food? We're hungry. You thought, we thought you are the king. 
who came to deliver us and restore the kingdom back to us. See, Jesus was revealing. He's looking at the people today who was worried, who was struggling, who are struggling about their life, trying to pay their bills. And he has the same message. Look at the birds of the air. What did he mean by that? He was revealing a more, one of the most powerful kingdom principles by saying that. I believe he will preach the same message if Jesus shows up today in our world about his kingdom. And then he said, seek the kingdom first and his righteousness and all the things that you need will be added to you. What did he mean by saying to us, look at the birds of the air because everything created has a purpose. It belongs to a specific place. As long as that creature remains in the place and do what it was created to do, it will not lack anything in their life. That is the revelation Jesus was trying to communicate by telling us, look at the birds of the air. Then he said, look at the lilies of the field. Same principle. Everything God created has a purpose, belongs to a specific place. Then he built in a function to fulfill that assignment. And sometimes we worry about what is my assignment? When I'm going to discover my calling? When I'm going to, it's a journey. It's a process. So please don't be depressed. You know, worry about your calling. It's a journey. You are on the right track. You are on the right track journey because you're seeking God's kingdom. It didn't happen for me in one day or in one year or in one month. It is a 25 years long journey in God's kingdom. And you may say, Abraham, I don't have that 25 years left in my life. <laughs> I need now, you know, I need tomorrow. Well, ask God to give you the revelation. He will do it. I, I tell you, one of the most powerful prayers, I will give you the key that unlocked everything in my life. Do you want the key? How many of you want the key that unlocked everything spiritual of his kingdom, revelation, all these books, was one simple prayer from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 70 through 21. There's not a day that I can think of that was gone in my life that I didn't pray that prayer. May the Father of our Jesus Christ fill you with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That's what unlocked everything for me. You ask God, Lord, give me the revelation of your kingdom. Don't ask for food. Don't ask for money. Give me the key that releases financial blessings. Give me the revelation that brings food into my table, in my home, for my family, for my children. Give me the revelation. Once you get the revelation, nobody can steal that from you. The, and that revelation will work in any place that you are in, any country, any season in your life. Revelation is the greatest wealth in God's kingdom. What is the greatest wealth in God's kingdom? Revelation. What is revelation? God reveals something that you do not know. What is the bridge between your current situation and the breakthrough or the next season is a revelation. Something that you didn't know, God will unveil it in your spirit, man. So I strongly believe today of all the speakers that are going to share with us, God is going to give you a revelation today. I strongly feel that in my spirit, man. You know, I don't have to preach every Sunday morning. This is not a church, remember? <laughs> This is the place where we equip and train you to discover your purpose. And the reason you are sharing is not to find the best preacher. It's not to raise you up to be a teacher or a preacher or a pastor. No, this is just to share the kingdom that is in you. So we can identify the tribe because we cannot fulfill what God has called us to do by ourselves. It takes a family. It takes a tribe then it takes a whole nation of people. Nobody in the Bible fulfilled their assignment by, by themselves. We need others. We need the support, fellowship, communion, and, and, and help in different areas. Oh, my Lord, my God. To do what we are called to do, we need support and help from hundreds of different people 
from all over the world, technology, media, editing, writing, designing, it takes a whole nation to fulfill an assignment. That's why you need that tribe to find out where and which tribe you belong. And that is the process we are in, finding your tribe. Those who have joined us for the first time, welcome to the Ecclesia family. And please leave your number and your phone number and your email on the chat room so we can collect it and keep you informed. And you will get a chance to share what God has called you to do, your assignment. And if you're here for the first time, you're more than welcome to say hello, unmute your um, microphone and say hello to us. Anybody? Daniela Hughes, welcome. Tell us where you're joining. Thank from. you. I'm joining from Chicago, Chicago, from Chicago Illinois. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Blessed to be here. Thank oh, you. yes, yes, yes. I remember you emailed me. Oh, um, yeah. The Women's Aglo meeting. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, anybody else here for the first time? Mama Morgan, welcome. Morning, Edmund, Nanita. Yes, please. Yes, who's that? Anybody here for the first this time? This is Mr. Mike. Masheka, welcome. Club. Yeah. Where are you joining yes, from? Please. From Choma. Choma, Zambia. Choma, Zambia. Zambia. I think pretty soon the whole Choma and Zambia will be with us in Zoom meetings. Yes, we need salvation. <laughs> we need a kingdom. Need we're saved. Now we need the kingdom. I just sure. see welcome. Hi, Heather. Dr. Kati. Tony, welcome. Andre, welcome. Anybody else here for the first time that you want to greet us? Please leave your phone number a name on the theory, welcome. Well, let's jump into who's going to share with us today. I think it is Jerry, my brother, is going to be the first one who will be sharing. Jerry is my neighbor in Denver. God connected us, I don't know how many years ago, 25 years ago. Then we got disconnected. Then God reconnected us two years ago. He showed up at my office miraculously, and it was a wonderful reunion. Thank you, Jerry, for being who you are, your patience, your help, your prayers, your support, everything. You've been a brother and a friend from the Lord. So thank God for your life and what God is doing in your life, through your life. And I know it's a beginning. It's only a, it's only a scratch what God has done and doing in your life. Believe to do amazing things so jerry are you here i saw you just walking away okay there he is welcome let's welcome jerry teeler thank you good morning good afternoon good evening kingdom family thank you brother abraham for this opportunity to to share you know um hey train i haven't seen your face in a long time <laughs> um, the Lord How are you doing, really, Jerry? It's great to see you. You too. The Lord has really just been dealing with me for several years as I began to pray and, and really just seek his face about the kingdom. And, and he's been dealing with me about men and the heart and the condition of the heart of men. And so I've come to realize that that really is my calling to really minister to men. Because if you look at not only our society, but the whole world, in every situation where there's a problem, there's a man behind it. And it doesn't matter what level you go into, there's a, there's a man behind every single problem. And so I began to look at, why, Lord, why is that? And he took me back to Genesis 1, 26. He said that, because he put man in charge. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. And then I don't remember if, if Abraham, if, if you shared this with me or if the Lord revealed it to me, but I just remember getting this information, this revelation. And that was when Eve sinned, nothing really changed. But as soon as she gave that piece of fruit, whether it was a kumquat, a kiwi, 
an apple or orange, a grape, whatever it was from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, once Adam ate, then everything changed. Their eyes were opened, they became afraid, sin entered in, and man lost his position. Lost a lot more than that. But he lost his ability to be a son. He lost his identity and all the things that Abraham has taught us in, in the classes that you know we've either gone through or, or some of you are still going through. But he went from being a son of God being connected to God, doing what God predestined him to do and be. He went from that to existing. He went from that to working to get his shelter, to feed him and his family, to buy things because sin had entered in. And Satan began to build his kingdom, obviously. And so you fast forward to today, and what are men doing today? That's right. They're existing. They don't know their kingdom calling. They don't know their purpose. They don't know why they're here on this earth. And so they begin to get into things that they shouldn't be getting into. In addition to that, because Satan has been running this whole world. He's infiltrated every area of life that God has created for good. He's perverted it and turned it around. So that being said, families are not the way God intended them to be. And so now we as children are being wounded by the people that should be protecting us. And all of us have grown up in this in this world system and we've all been affected by that and so i can safely say that i've been adversely affected by it and the lord has been healing me and delivering me along the way and so that being said there's a lot of things just running through my mind right now but that being said is that god has set me to help men get reconnected to their purpose, their calling, and to discover their gifts within the kingdom so that they can begin to walk down the road that God has for them, that they can begin to accomplish what God has, has established for them, predestined them for. And in doing so, we, we begin to fix the family. Because once the man is in position doing what he's supposed to be doing, his family is strengthened. The neighborhood began to come, become strengthened. The community becomes strengthened. And Abraham, you've heard a lot of this because we've talked over and over. But the rest of you probably haven't. And so that being said, our cities become strengthened. And more and more people are walking in what God has predestined them to do. And so once our cities and our states, our region, eventually our country, and then the world. So that's really what the Lord has really pressed upon my heart. And in doing so, as we begin to pursue what God has for us, as we begin to pursue the kingdom and learn about how it works, how it functions. Where's my place in it? What am I supposed to be doing in it? We begin to answer these questions as we continue to, to walk down that path. Well, the Lord answers them and he gives us revelation. Then things just start working out. Amen. Wave, say something. I'm a participatory <laughs> person, so I, I like to hear somebody say amen from time to time. So just unmute yourself when I pause and say amen, Brother Jerry. Amen. Uh -huh. amen. amen, Brother Jerry. Speak right. it, preach that. Amen, you. Brother Jerry. Thank you. Thank amen, you. Brother Jerry. And, and so here's the deal. Amen. Is the enemy obviously has created all these different religions. Why? 
because from the beginning, he didn't want man to be in charge because he saw what God was doing. Amen. When, when, when God kicked, kicked Satan and Lucifer out of heaven, he came here. And so God said, let us create man in our image after our likeness, according to our likeness, and let him have dominion, da, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So Satan looked at that and said, wow, now I'm going to have to answer the man because God just put man in charge. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, no, no, we can't do this. God, I can't be answering to you and to man too. I got to do something about it. And so obviously he convinced Eve to sin. And so from that time, Satan has been trying and attempting in different ways and avenues to keep man from learning and discovering the kingdom of God so that we don't know who we are. We don't know what we're supposed to be doing. And we don't know the direction that we're supposed to be going to fulfill the kingdom mandate. So that's why Satan has created all these different religions. And people get caught up in that because I was. I was a Christian at one point thinking I'm doing, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. But no, I wasn't anywhere near where God would have me be. So that being said, Reach it. the enemy has been trying to divert our attention and get us focused on everything, anything other than the kingdom of God, even if it's sin. I mean, he uses, for men, we're very visual. And so he's been using perversion of sex to entrap men. And he had me entrapped for 40 plus years in pornography. I'm going to put that out there. That doesn't mean that's what I'm doing now, but that's what he had me in, trying to keep me from learning and discovering what my true purpose and calling was because he knew who God's created me to be. I'm going to slap him upside his head and step in his neck every chance I get. And so that's what I'm doing now. But it took me 36, almost 36 years to get to this place right now. And so he was... You know how you, you're just minding your own business, doing whatever you do, going on your daily stuff, right? And then God just starts speaking to me. And he says, son, I want you to read James 1, verses, hold on. Ah, here it is, 13 through 15. This is what it says. In whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of truth and the gospel of salvation, in whom also after ye were ye believed, and ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest and inheritance. No, that's not what I'm... Basically, this is it. I think I'll turn over there because because you were talking about that. I was looking at Ephesians. It was James. James 1 verses 13 through 15, it talks about um, your evil desire and you get entrapped because the desire in your heart is evil and then, it begin, then you become enticed. And after you're enticed, then you sin. And then after you sin and, and sin becomes full grown, then it brings forth death. And so it kind of takes me back to what God told Adam and Eve, if you eat from that tree, you're surely going to die. But they didn't die physically. They died spiritually. And so the same thing is today, is that we men, we, you know, because we've grown up in this world system, we get enticed by things that we shouldn't be enticed by because of whatever's in there, because of the environment that we've grown up in, we're products of our environment. We grow up in it. So therefore, that's what we know. And then we do what we know and so forth and so on. Thank God for, you know, for folk like Abraham who come along and say, hey, man, did you know about the kingdom? And I'm like, what you talking about, dude? <laughs> but anyway, so God has really ministered to me about men because it's the heart of man that is really the crust 
of what's happening in our world and in, in, in our society and our government and in, in our economic system and our agriculture system. It's the heart of man and it's corrupt. And so God is saying, fix the heart, Jerry, you're going to fix all these problems. But it's got to be through the kingdom. Obviously, I can't do it in, in, in and of myself. And so that's really what God has really been dealing with me about is dealing with the heart of man, and especially in families. I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place, but in families, you know, when, when, when we're children, I can speak for myself. When I was a child, my parents told me a child should be seen and not heard. Hmm. And so what that instilled in me, Did we lose him? Can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Yes, brother. Yes, yes, you can hear me. Yes, we can. Yes, yes, we can. I think he's frozen. Yes. There is in Wi-Fi disconnected. Okay. He's frozen. Yeah, he will. He will the freeze pretty soon so that is that is a wonderful thing you know i heard a story from a preacher one day he said you know a father had a son and when he came back home from work you know this father really wanted to rest you know because if you work monday through friday you go through the routine when you come back home you know you want to rest and the son was bothering him so he was thinking how can i keep my son busy so what this father did was he was reading the newspaper and he saw the picture of a world map in the whole section of the newspaper. And he took that section and tore it into several pieces and gave it to his son and said, go back and put this world map together and bring it back to me. <laughs> so he thought he was going to keep him busy for a while. So the son took this pieces of paper to to next room and within three minutes he was back and his father was shot he said son how did you put all these pieces back that soon and the son said something powerful he said there was a picture of the man on the other side of that newspaper i put the man back together and the world came into the right order the world map came into the right order i said that story was amazing so if you put the man together where he belonged to the assignment, to the identity of man, the world will come back to the right place where it's supposed to be. Because it was to Adam, like Jerry said, you know, they were one, Adam and Eve were one. Eve ate the fruit, but nothing happened until Adam also ate it because they were one. God gave to the dominion over to Adam and Eve, and they lost it. So where do we start to fix the problem that began? Not starting with the new programs to help men to have more fun. Not by fixing video games in our church children's ministry. That's not how we fix the problem we have in our day to day. That's what the church is trying to do. You know, they're putting $100,000 video games for young people to have fun you know when they come to church this is churches i saw this reality you know the games they put together and the game room and this room and that room for to attract young people but then they go back into the same issue they had before the, the problem the fixing of the problem starts with fixing the identity mm -hmm. if there's one thing that we need to fix in our life and all of our lives actually especially men is one area that they're messed up is in their identity. They're trying to become somebody by doing something, either in ministry or a job or successful, trying to make money. And then they fail big and they get depressed and they don't know what they're supposed to do because nobody taught them about their identity in Christ, in God as a son and as a daughter. You are a son and a daughter before you started doing anything. That's how Jesus began. His father said, this is my beloved son 
who is a graduate of a prestigious university. That's not what he said. This is my beloved son in whom I am well placed. If your identity is not established in your sonship, nothing will work or daughtership not only your education, not the degrees you have, not any qualification, not the ethnical, cultural, racial, whatever. It won't work in God's kingdom because God's kingdom order is identity, releases our birthright. Birthright releases our assignment and our assignment has the power to attract resources that you need to fulfill that assignment. That is God's kingdom order. Not first education, identity first. Education is good if you needed one to fulfill your assignment. But identity, your, your identity shouldn't be based on your education, where you came from, how much money you make, what kind of job you do, which part of town you were born, which country you were born, what color of your skin is. Your identity needs to be based on your relationship with your heavenly father as a son or a daughter. Until that happened, God will hold you back. I tell you the truth. He held me back. I wanted to build a big ministry. I wanted to be the pastor of the largest church. I wanted to have this. I wanted to have that. Do you know why? Because I was trying to create an identity for myself. I was insecure. I didn't know who I was. So God held me back for 30, 40 years. The moment your identity is released, God will, or established, God will release you to fulfill your assignment. He will not hold you back a day. That's why it took 30 years for Jesus to come to that understanding. Why didn't he father release him when he was 20? He was the son of God. But for Jesus to come to that revelation, that his identity is based on his relationship with his father, not as a carpenter, not on the tribe of Judah he was born, not on the Jewish ethnicity he was born, but to become a son of God. And do you know how he reached there? Not from a school. There was, he reached there through his relationship. He says he cried through the suffering he experienced in his life because he wanted to do his own thing. Even the point of death at the cross, Jesus had to choose to do the will of his father. He hesitated like, Father, is this the cup? Is it possible to remove this cup from my life? But yet not my will, but yours be done. So it was a constant battle in his mind, in his heart, to choose to do the will of his father. He was a human without sin. But everything he did was based on the identity of sonship. So, Jerry, are you back here? Yes. I Thank am. You. I am back. The devil lost is alive. You, we lost you for a minute, so I had to preach. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you were right on point, man. Well, praise right. God. So, you know, I, I experienced this father wound, this mom and fa mother and father wound. And, you know, my folks were telling me that I need to be seen and not heard. So, basically, um, based on what our sister from South Africa was sharing, I was one of those folks that I need to talk because I have some important things to say because that's how God created me to say things and I'd be running things in the future. However, that was one of the wounds that, that the enemy was using mm. to keep me from discovering the kingdom, right? And so God had, the Holy Spirit had to point that out to me, and I had to forgive and release my parents so that he could love on me and, and, and heal me and love the hurt away. And so because of that, and many, many other wounds that I experienced from my parents, and here I am thinking that I had great parents and, and our relationship was wonderful, this and that, da, da, da. And then the Holy Spirit start pinpointing things. You got this, you got that, you got this. Wow. Okay, here you go, Lord. So because of that, I had to forgive them for each one and then release them and allow Holy Spirit to love on me. And because of that, I've been able to walk 
this kingdom walk and, and, and become, the, and walk into the, and learn who God really says that I am, you know, talking identity. And even now, you know, sometimes when I'm struggling with, you know, my identity in, in, in life and whatnot, all God has to do is say, you're my son. I'm like, oh, thank you, daddy. I needed that, you know? And so it's been such a blessing. But I, I look at, okay, well, if I'm dealing with stuff, and I know in the church, 99.99% .99 of the men are dealing with pornography. The enemy has been trapping men with that sin. And the thing is, like the, the scripture I gave you earlier with James, so what the enemy does is he brings it to you. And then after you indulge in it, then he slaps you with shame and guilt. And so he's the one that brought it to you. And now he's putting all that other, the mother spirits on you. And he's keeping you once again from discovering who God predestined you to be. So it literally is, you know, the good fight of faith. So we have to change the way we think, allow the Lord to heal us in, you know, with those internal wounds so that we can actually become and, and, and rise to the level of becoming who God really predestined us to be without all of that other stuff. And so God has really been dealing with me about, you need to take it to the man, take it to the man. All right, Lord, I'm taking it. And then he shared with me, I'm asleep. And God started talking to me and he put this beautiful leather bound book right there. I'm like, Lord, what is that? And he didn't answer right away. And so I, when I woke up, he said, that's your book. I'm like, what? Yeah, he said, that's your book. You're going to write this book. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I'll be writing a book at some point in the future about the healing process, mm. discovering who God says you are in his kingdom, and walking in it, learning how. Go, Jerry. Is. Yes. She said, go, Jerry. <laughs> oh, praise God. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's just been an, an amazing, amazing journey. And, and I just want to encourage you guys that, I know the enemy has been trying to attack you because you're learning about the kingdom. You're in the classes that Abraham has been teaching. You've already done the classes that Abraham has taught and the enemy is still coming at you. I just want you to be encouraged because what he's attacking you with is not who you are. Mm -hmm. You are a daughter of God. You are a son of God and there's nothing that can change that. There's nothing that you can do that will cause God to stop loving you. You cannot lose your position in his family. You are a son. There's a, that's a term of endearment. In other words, you are his offspring. Can you disown your children? No, the world tries to, but they still have your DNA. They're, they're, yeah, they have your DNA in them, don't they? just like we have the DNA of God in us. So don't listen to the lies that the enemy has been trying to put in you. You're not good enough. Uh, uh, you don't have what it takes or whatever other lie that he may try and instill in you. You know who you are because God has been revealing that to you. And so in in dealing with those wounds, I just want you to start asking some questions. Okay, I'm feeling out of sorts. I'm feeling like some may write. I, I feel like I'm getting angry. I'm. I feel like I'm. I'm. I'm belittled. Something just. I'm. I'm off kilter. What is it, Holy Spirit? What is it? And be quiet and allow Holy Spirit to reveal it to you, because the further you walk in this journey, the more. The Lord is going to heal you and separate you from what you grew up in to what you're growing up in, into his kingdom. And so God is, is, is healing. He's already started the process, and you probably didn't even realize it. And so just give into it and allow the Holy Spirit to pinpoint things in your past, because he will literally take you back to the moment 
Those words were spoken. Another time, the Holy Spirit told me, hey, check this out. And he took me back to the moment that my parents said, get out of my face. After they dealt with me about whatever it was that I did, and they, they told me to get out of my face, right? And they sent me to my room so that I could deal with myself, right? And so that, that instilled a sense of failure in me. And then once again, reestablishing you're not good enough. And so I'm walking through life with this sense of failure, a fear of failure. And that ain't God. But nonetheless, that's what the enemy had in store for me. So just know, God put you in charge, man. And he put women there to help us men. You know, there wouldn't be women's rights right now. There wouldn't be, you know, this big feminist movement if the men of God were doing and being who God predestined them to be because they would exalt that woman, they would protect that woman, and they would exalt that woman because they'd see the value and the worth that that woman provides and brings. Mm. Amen? Amen. So God is dealing with me about Amen. men because men are, men are the problem. They're the problem in government. They're the problem in the economic system. They're the problem in agriculture. They're the problem in education in every way. I know Satan's behind it, but who is he using? Men. And then the men jack up the women, and then whoop, here we go. The men are molesting the kids instead of being who God predestined them to be. And so now that child is growing up jacked up because a man who God has put in charge has done things. People ask, how could God, if he's such a loving God, allow that child to be raped? Dude, he put man in charge. And man is doing what he thinks he should be doing, even though Satan is leading him to do it. He put man in charge. So we want the raping of children to stop, the sex trafficking to stop. We need to fix the heart of man. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jerry. You want, Amen. You want, I know I got to go. You want pornography Amen. to stop? You got to fix the heart of men. Mm. You want the, the country's government to be more guided like the kingdom of God? You got to fix the heart of man. I think I've made my point, but that's what's up. That's what God has really been dealing with me about. So praise God. Thank you, Abraham, for this opportunity. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Jerry. I thank God for what he is doing in your life, has done in your life. Thank you for not giving up, my brother. I know it's been challenging because you want it out there flowing in the calling that God has placed up. But God said, slow down, son. <laughs> yeah. It's not time yet. But because God has to prepare you, imagine that. You know, the, the greater the vision, longer it takes for the preparation. Even Jesus had to prepare for 30 years. Moses, 80 years because of his assignment to bring his people out of bondage. And imagine trying to deal with the hearts of men and God is says to prepare a person for that. That's not an easy assignment. That is not, that is not something that you just pick it up and just wing it, you know. God has I'm up for the challenge, though. <laughs> God has to deal with you first. And I love you to go through all this mess that men would go through in their life. So when you come out on the other side, now you're prepared to help them and compassion on them because you understand their pain, what Amen. they go through in their marriage, in their relationships, in their personal life, in their struggles that men go through that nobody knows. Nobody else can understand it. So thank you. Anybody else have any questions, comments for Jerry? Before we go to the next person, Daniel, I see your hand. Please unmute and. Yes, sir. Good. Blessed Sunday, Kingdom family. Um, uh, Apostle, one thing I want to ask, and I know a lot of people on this platform will, will continue asking how do you know when? God is telling you, wait, 
because this waiting is not easy. Apostle, you know it. Mm -hmm. For you to be able to understand this waiting, because uh, it's quite, it's quite muffled. So please, I want you to deal with it. I understand it, but I don't understand. So uh, please deal with it. Thank you. You know, that's a good place to be that you say, said, I don't understand. <laughs> Then you had to trust God for the next step that you had to make, you know, the next feet that you have put your feet on the other, in front of the other feet. You know, I found out in our life that as men, we want to make things happen. You know, we try out there trying to help God in helping, fulfilling his dream. And then we fall on our face. Nothing works out the way we wanted, thought it to it the time we wanted, nothing in life works out the way we thought or wanted or on the time we wanted. So God will wait for the moment that you don't want to do it anymore. Like Moses, when God appeared to him on the backside of the wilderness, Moses said, you're coming to the wrong person. I want to do this 40 years ago. <laughs> I was, I had my strength, I had my karate from Egypt. I knew everything and, and you didn't show up. Here I am feeding my sheep. I'm eight years old. I can't even talk now. And God said, you're ready now, boy. Now is the time to go to Egypt <laughs> because it's not by power. It's not by might, but by his spirit. And God will wait until he can get the whole glory, not on the strength of a man or the speed of his feet or a leg or anything that we can make it happen for him. God just wanted a body. That's what he's waiting for. That's why he gave us his body so he can dwell in us and do what he wants to do through us. That was Jesus. He said, a body has been prepared for me, for him to come and become a sacrifice and giving our life as a daily sacrifice, living sacrifice daily, as it says in Romans chapter 12. And is it easy? No, we will kick, we will scream. We want to do everything, but then God will wait. He will hold us back until our identity is established in him as a son and even if nothing else happens in the future, you are satisfied, you are happy. That's the number second step that you know. First thing, you have to reach a place that unless God does something else, you're done. Mm -hmm. And the second, the second point is, you know, you have to reach that place that you don't want to do it anymore. And that means you're ready then then God gets the glory. And you have to be so secure in that identity, the third step. You have to reach a place that nothing else happened. If nothing else happened in life, if I don't do nothing, no ministry, no preaching, no teaching, I am happy and satisfied. Can you reach a place like that in your life? If you, if you never preach again, I'm talking about myself. I reach that place. If I don't minister another chance in my life, can I be happy and satisfied and feel fulfilled in my identity? My relationship with my heavenly father is not based on how I look, how I feel, what I do, nothing. I have to reach that place that where I was totally satisfied. Everything was gone. All ministry was gone. Churches were gone. Network were gone. Pastors network gone. Schools were gone. Orphanages were gone. I and my father alone. And I had to reach that place. Father, I told him, Father, if I don't do nothing, even if you don't do anything for me for the rest of my life, I'm happy. And then it began. <laughs> then it began. And even if you lose everything now, you're okay. Because you are so secure 
in your identity in him. And you're a free man. That's called freedom in Christ. Amen. Trina, I see your hand. I see people. Keep it short, please. All the comments we have. Several people to go. I like to be quick, so it's not a problem. <laughs> First of all, I want to piggyback on what you just said, because that is so critical. You have to be all of those things. And I'm personally going through the, the process of it. So I just wanted to encourage Jerry to say, hey, listen, you're not alone in this. And there's definitely a process to it. And Abraham is 100% right. And I'm just waiting for God to do something or not. So I just want to encourage Jerry and just say, God bless you, brother. Keep pushing it and doing what God tells you to do or don't. <laughs> Either way, you're blessed. Thanks, Trina. Martin, then Thierry, then Ken and Lori. All right. Uh, afternoon, everyone. I'm my brother, Jerry. Listen, you fire me up, brother. You, you literally spill my heart. One of the things, among the many things that I carry, men is a large part of, of what I breathe and think because you have said it. Um, it, the thing is where the, the thing is the way it is because men have gone off the rails and i believe that god has risen up and is raising raising up a bunch of us who is going to literally take that back represent that i actually my wife was saying we have to have you speaking at the next um thing because we have to touch we actually started at the first seminar we touched a bit on it because um you cannot have a family if you don't have a man it just can't happen. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I think we have moved aggressively away from that. And this is why we have the lopsided, broken down, damaged and open door policy that we have had because the gatekeeper have, have been removed and we have to get back. And that's one of the things I'm hearing very loud and clear. Again, I say, brother, we are with you. And um, listen, we will be talking more and connecting more because you you spoke my heart, all of it. So just wanted to let you know that encouraged and we're, and, and many of us are, are out here waiting to hear voices like yours to, to, to mobilize and to organize and to, to say, we're here, let us talk, let us connect because we have to bring it back, brother. And I believe that we are th those, the sons that the earth is waiting for. So I preach, I, I stop here. <laughs> yeah. So Abraham, yeah. Let, let me, let me share, share something real quick. Um, you know, there's been a major attack on the man because the enemy has been demasculating us, has been belittling our position and the importance of who we are. Once again, why? So that we won't be who God predestined us to be and impact everything that he's established on this earth. Because that's why Jesus, another reason why he came is to destroy the works of the enemy. And this is what we'll do through the kingdom is destroy everything he set up Amen. Amen. See, Jerry already signed up for next event. I know spiritually saying, discerning, you're at a place. You don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I can see that. I can sense that, you know, but God said, now is the time. And Martin picked that up. Now, see, that's what happens. That is the purpose of the ecclesia, finding that place. And the next assignment God has for you. And thank God for, for what he's doing. Theory, my brother, go for it. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. All right, all right. Now, I was wanted to say that uh, I'm in total agreement with what Jerry was sharing. Uh, and that uh, not too long ago, you know, God showed me and actually revealed the same thing to me that he was just speaking. And I was just like, man, you know out of the mouth of two or more witnesses let every word be established. So I am in totally agree, uh, total agreement with what he's saying. Um, and that scripture kind of popped up in my mind as well, is that it said that um, if the foundation is ruined, then the house cannot stand. So we talk about the house being the, the family structure. So, um, you know, that scripture came up in, the, in my mind where as you were speaking, and uh, just wanted to say, hey, man, just keep going. Uh, you know, let 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 not, you know, let your heart fail. Just continue to push along and uh, share 
what's on your heart to uh, all the men out there because we definitely need that right now. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's powerful. Ken and Lori, I don't know who wants to go. Uh, Jerry, I couldn't agree with you more. It was uh, very powerful. And uh, speaking as a dad and a granddad myself, um, I found it to be uh, you know, very, very uh, inspiring to uh, hear your, uh, your call. And, uh, and I definitely think you're, definitely, you're more than on the right track. And uh, you've, uh, God has, I think, put in your heart uh, the, the exact place for you to be. You're a phenomenal speaker, and uh, you are able to get to, uh, or you're able to have those things revealed to you in such a way that, and then communicate it for us mm -hmm. so that we are able to understand it and, uh, and benefit from it. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, before I show this, uh, Abraham John did not ask me to show this, but I am rereading this book uh, and what it is, it's the uh, recognizing God's timing in your life. And I, I think that this really, but this book is a phenomenal book, like all of his books. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to read one little paragraph real quick. Some challenges are sent by God. When God is stirring the waters in your life, it is use, uh, useless to uh, fight the devil. Each time we enter into a new season, we uh, will be tested and troubled in different areas of our life. God wants us to go to the next level in our walk with him, uh, where we know him more intimately than ever before. And I, I'm, I know that you're, you're definitely, I think, there. <laughs> that's all i have oh oh and great t-shirt perfect for what you said today courageous <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. you thank you thank you guys for all your encouragement for jerry nervlin please go okay um good evening and good afternoon everyone and i just wanted to piggyback on what everybody has said it has been um, one of the cries of my heart as a, a woman to see um, men just deviating from God and just basically on their way to hell, right? And the family is suffering and nobody is really... Um, Picking up that mantle and saying, you know, let us do something. Let us help the men. And the men are crying out, but nobody can hear their voices. Nobody is listening. We are all just um, concentrating on our own feelings and our own emotions and what, what's going on in our own lives. And the family, the society, the country, the world, the, the earth is in turmoil and so i i just want to thank god for you and now i know how to pray for you because you know as women or as a woman sometimes i feel like there is not much i can do and um but i know one thing i can do is pray and so i have been praying for the men of the world, even the men in our um, our churches, that God will bring bring people into the church and to change the world for Him. So, I just want to say, God bless you and um, keep doing what you're doing, and may His power overshadow you. May His Spirit enlighten you, that you may be able to speak boldly. And no matter what persecution, no matter what trial, no matter what um, situation mm. that you will find yourself in, he will strengthen you. He has put steel in your back and you will be victorious for God. And we will see 
the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to um, just say to you, you are blessed, be blessed, you are highly favored, and you are walking in the calling of the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, if you know that what you are, you have asked him for, it is his will, then we believe that we have received it. Amen. And so therefore, you have received it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. We are in agreement. We bless you, Jerry. Thank you so much. May the Lord continue to open those doors, connections, and put all the pieces together for you to reach the heart of men, not just here locally, but globally in Jesus' name. We bless you as the ecclesia in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for your encouragement, prayers. Keep him in prayers. The next person we have is my wonderful brother, Jesse Cota, all the way from India. He is called into the technology world. God has assigned him, gifted him. Since he's been part of the kingdom school, the ecclesia, God has done some amazing thing in his life, in his job, in his assignment. I could see Jesse is not the same person that he was six months ago. You know, how the glory of God and how he transformed. And there's one person I could say that is literally transformed, that I can see the change on his face. That is Jesse. From the time he showed up in our meetings in the kingdom school and the ecclesia. So Jesse, I'm so grateful for what God is doing in your life, done in your life. Thank you for being a blessing to the ecclesia, to the ministry. Man, only God knows and also, you have not seen everything yet, what God is going to do. One day, you are going to be a business owner in the IT world. You're going to have your own business. It is coming. I'm not saying that lightly Amen. to make you feel good, yeah. but that is your long-term assignment. Amen. It's yeah. training you, it's equipping you, putting you in the right place, moving you to the next company so he can give you some more experience how they do those things. So I can't wait to see what God is going to do through you. So... Welcome to the Ecclesia. Thank you. The mic is yours. So share with us, ladies and gentlemen. Let's yeah. just see. Yeah, thank you, brother. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, greetings to all uh, Kingdom family. So just I want to introduce myself a little bit uh, mm -hmm. more. So where I'm from. And I'm from uh, India. And uh, place is Nellore, Andhra Pradesh. And... The world education system has given me a degree called Bachelor of Technology in Mechanical Engineering. And I complete my engineering, then I came for a job search uh, to Bangalore. So in Bangalore is the IT hub where uh, people will settle, uh, they want to start and build their career in IT or in other uh, different, different industry, especially in South India. So most people, uh, most uh, people prefer to come to either Bangalore or Chennai. So I choose to go to uh, Bangalore. Then uh, my journey begins there with uh, searching for a job. And so we were in uh, some depression situation, like uh, after six months, I tried hard and but nothing is turned up. I was attending interviews, no progress and uh, project pressure from the home, then what to do in that situation. And one of my brother, uh, brother in the sense like he's my senior, he's a believer. And whenever I see him, he, he has some boldness in his spirit. He was always be very happy and rejoice. Uh, what is the secret uh, that uh, this brother is, uh, this person is very happy? So I started uh, asking him, oh, why are you so happy? What is the reason? Then he shared the gospel about Christ. Okay, then I, I did not accept immediately. Then, okay, good, good, good. Something, please pray for me. Please pray for my job also so that uh, I'm getting pleasure from my home. Then later on, he was praying for me. And whenever uh, we're having a dinner time, he used to share about uh, the God's testimonies, how the God is blessing people. 
whatever the knowledge, the little knowledge, whatever the God has given to me, he used to share with me. I was so encouraged. I was so inspired. Then suddenly one day, brother, wherever you go, I will come with you. I will come to the church where you, were, uh, you attended. That time we used to attend uh, full gospel assembly of God church in uh, Bangalore. Then all the people are, uh, this person is getting converted. <laughs> the people are uh, my friends and the roommates are started thinking that way. So I told him, brother, uh, yes, their eyes, they, they are seeing in a different uh, angles. So I'm being converted from one religion to another religion. So that brother told me, don't, uh, uh, I mean, whatever, uh, whatever, how they think doesn't matter. If you want to life to be transformed, you have to reconnect to God's kingdom. That's what uh, that brother told. And we are attending church uh, services on Sunday. And I started building in the, uh, started building uh, in the word of God. Then instantly I got an opportunity to work for a bank, not an IT job. So that is HDFC Securities, where I used to uh, work for investment portfolios, like uh, go to the customer, uh, pitch our products, uh, financial products. And I worked there almost uh, one year. Then learn some IT course. It is the time to move to, into corporate world. I, I used to get a voice from where this voice is coming. Then I started learning a uh, course. Then after uh, two months, I got a job in IT. Then uh, my career begins in uh, corporate world. Then I worked there in a small company for six months. So then after that, uh, now it's time to move. Uh, then it's time to move to other companies. So God wants to bless me financially. So as I part, I mean, I, I was started uh, giving tithe, the church where I used to attend. Then after that, uh, I got a job in Caterpillar. So that is a great and uh, a great blessing for me during that time. And even my college uh, friends, they got shocked. How you got in uh, job in such a big company? And you are not uh, that much merit student. And what is the reason? So I told him, so it's because of God, that's, that's it. I, not my talent, not my abilities, not my strength, only whatever uh, the instruction I received from the Lord, I, will, I used to follow that. And I started working in uh, Caterpillar, then three, four years, everything is fine. Financially, uh, they pay salary well, everything is fine. And there is something God wants to communicate some information like uh, about the purpose, I think. So God wants to communicate something to me. What is that something? What is that something? So we started uh, really reading all the spiritual books and uh, different, different authors, but there is no satisfaction. So what to do next? And uh, even company also in uh, struggle situation, Caterpillar in 2015, uh, the sales gone down and uh, revenue has been cut down by $20 billion. So that impacted uh, every employee in the organization. So as we in uh, Bangalore office, they want to close the facility itself. Let's terminate the employees and uh, we'll shut down the operations here. And I work for a IT division. So they want to outsource all the employees to a vendors. Then that time I, what to do, either I need to search for another job or what to do, Lord. Uh, I was praying then, God told me, be here. Don't go anywhere. So when the crisis happens, when uh, the people are uh, moving towards, uh, the, I mean, uh, searching outside and moving forward. But later on the company, what they decided was like, uh, we will outsource the employees to vendor place and we will give the projects to them. And how many years you worked in this company, that much months they paid the salary. And apart from four months advance salary, totally one year salary they paid as a bonus. And we transferred to vendor place, that is Infosys. So why I'm saying all these things is like whenever God wants to take to a greater heights, he wants to train you in the beginning itself. Just now the brother told, right? Like, Jesus got trained for 30 years to before starting his assignment. Then I 
where uh, Infosys, I started uh, working in from 2017 onwards. Then challenges, again, heavy challenges, like uh, work-wise, uh, the, I mean, like companies seeing in a different prospect. So, so till now we're a Caterpillar employee, they see a different person, but now we are no more a Caterpillar employee, now we're a vendor employee. They would treat like a different person, vendor employment. So challenges set the workplace, but uh, by grace of God, I'm able to solve all the problems. And we are working hard, but pay is less. And what we expect as per the industry standards. Then I got released from Caterpillar account. Then again, heavy challenges started. I moved to another account like uh, manufacturing domain. So there are full of politics. And uh, that, uh, I mean like, uh, you know, I mean like people who are working in corporate world, they will come to know, I mean like how the politics, how they will blame the person, okay? So these kind of situation I have gone through for the last five years and I was stuck at the same level what I left from Caterpillar as a senior uh, software engineer. No promotion, no payment, no hike, no, no salary hike. And I want to move from this company lot then God is not allowing me to move forward. Then 2020 COVID hit. Then what to do? Then they thought they will, again, some layoff will happen. But uh, by, by grace of God, job is, I'm still in the organization, but they did not lay off me. Uh, they mapped me to a banking projects. So that's where the blessing starts. So I got opportunity in service-based company to work with multiple applications, interacting with multiple uh, multiple people, so that uh, I can learn. I got opportunity to learn uh, many things in application-wise, how to develop application, how to deal with customers, how to deal with different different person. So if I be in the same organization for Caterpillar, I never got opportunity to work with multiple applications. Then. Everything is fine. Then uh, one of my brother uh, introduced me about uh, the, I mean, like the message of the kingdom. And in YouTube, he showed me one message that is uh, Dr. Miles Monroe. He was, uh, uh, that message title is. Uh, Miles <laughs> Monroe. Assignment of uh, Jesus Christ. Kingdom assignment of Jesus Christ. So that was very impressive. I mean, like uh, he was talking about more about purpose and everything. Then what's your purpose, brother? Uh, that's what the brother asked me. Then I have no answer to say. So brother, I got it. I complete my education. I'm working in corporate world. So I don't know what is my purpose. What is my calling? What to do in, uh, what is the next step? So my plan was, to, I mean, like uh, to retire IT director in a, in a big IT firm. So that is my goal that I have set in my life. So then now onwards, you have to be serious. You have to get the answer from the Lord about your purpose. So when purpose, when God sent place you here, there is a purpose. So without, so God cannot send any person without, uh, I mean, like uh, there is no I mean destination. So there will be a destination. You have to be something. You have to be a contributor for God's kingdom. Do something for God, to for his glory. Then I started praying. Then I connected to Indian school. Uh, the same brother has introduced me. So brother Abraham John. Then I started uh, learning all the courses in the kingdom school. So as I, as I was uh, praying for my purpose, what is my calling Lord? What is my calling Lord? The God told me one thing. You have to go into business and uh, create the wealth for God's kingdom to help my people. So that is the only statement that God has given for me. And after one month, again, the God visited me and the next assignment will be like, I was invited as a speaker to speak on uh, business strategies, how to improve their business and sharing the ideas. And all people who are in the entrepreneurship, uh, they, those people are connected to me and those people are getting saved through the ideas that which I gave to them and uh, their business problems are getting solved. And some people, they connected me, like uh, the companies are in dying situation. They have no hope for them. So in my, in, in, that, in that seminar, the speech which I shared, the strategies which I giving giving to them, 
that uh, I mean the companies are coming into the normal shape after three months. So I have a business and I have to do as a business coach. I have to, have to try and uh, I mean like uh, build more business for God's people and create wealth for God's kingdom. That is my calling, brother. And woo. And yeah, yes, go ahead. I want to, yeah. Then what to do next? So you call me into the business. What to do next? So I'm in technology world. So mainly I need to focus on technology services and uh, technology automation solution. Nowadays everything is uh, going into automation process. How to uh, come with the automation solutions and application product development. And I have a desire like uh, my brother-in-law wants to build a garment industry. So I want to help him and uh, by partnering with him. Mm. So I am into totally business world, great wealth for garment. So in April 2021, uh, after this uh, post completed like this one, purpose calling and gifts, then God has given me one strategy like uh, whatever the knowledge that you have, share it with others that will turn to a blessing for you. Mm-hmm. And in uh, FB, I saw your post brother, like uh, whatever you can produce, keep producing, don't stop it. That will help us to solve other people's problem. So whatever the knowledge in my technology, I started creating videos uh, posted in a YouTube channel and uh, have a like page in Facebook. Page. So I used to drive the, I mean, like upload the videos, run a free, free ads, okay? And for the last 10 months, I'm able to generate 10,000 US dollars revenue just for uh, YouTube channel and the Facebook page. So that is one of the great blessings for me. Wow, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and another thing, and uh, now Jesse, it's time to move. Uh, you have to resign in. You have to put down your purpose and you have to move to the next company where I will take to your next level and train you there for uh, according to the purpose. And I started uh, upload, updating my resume in September 2021. Mm. In November, I got uh, three offers, brother, with uh, 7% salary and 100% salary and 127% salary. So this is uh, another blessing. And it's uh, all glory to God and with the help of your teaching. And I want to say one more thing, like two books that you wrote that transformed my life. One is God's original design and the other one is kingdom economy. So where where I'm making mistake, I came to identify myself. So as we are, I mean, as I was in almost 10 years in religious world and we are sowing, but there is no answer. We are sowing partnering, so I think, but no is no answer. So uh, where exactly the mistake is happening, I got uh, all the answers from these two books. So with that, I got all my solutions where I'm missing. I'm, I'm correcting myself and uh, work uh, on uh, God's perfect plan. Yeah. Thank you, Jesse. You know, he got a promotion for his new job with 170% hike in his salary. <laughs> That's like... 127. 127%. 127%. 127%. 127%. 127%. 127%. Yeah. hike in his salary. Thank God for what God is doing through you, creating wealth for God's kingdom. Thank you for every seed that you sow. You know, God has been faithful to you and your family. And... You know, blockchain, don't forget blockchain. Every time I see you talk, yeah, yeah. blockchain comes to my mind. Learn, yeah. try to learn that thing, blockchain, because everything is going to an automation, AI, artificial yeah. intelligence. That's the future of technology. Mm-hmm. So, so try to learn, take a course from somewhere. I believe God will connect you and open the right doors for you. So we are so blessed to have you with us in the Ecclesia and the Kingdom family. Anybody has any questions or comments for Jesse? Anybody, anybody, anybody? 
I just want to say thank you, Jesse. It's it's wonderful to hear um, what mm. God is doing and how you've been so obedient to listen, to hear his voice and to move when he says move and to go when he says go. And I just yeah. uh, appreciate that testimony and, and um, it's so inspiring. Thank you, sister. So God's original design and kingdom economy Two dollars can change your life. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. The Kingdom Network website—you can get those books for two dollars. You may have gave away thousands of dollars, spent thousands of dollars for education, but those two books will transform your world. I guarantee you. And that's all you need to invest. Two dollars right now until the end of March. You can get those books for two dollars, one dollar each for each book, and anywhere in the world you can order it because. I'm giving away those books almost for nothing because I want people to be blessed. So thank you, Jesse, for those testimony. Thank you, Ken, for saying about recognizing God's timing for your life. I wrote that book. God gave me that book when I went through the worst pain in my life, recognizing God's timing for your life. So each of those books has a story attached to it, an aspect of my life, the kingdom economy, I slept on a concrete floor for 18 years. And my father, when he gets salary, the, the best gift that he brought was home was peanuts once a month. <laughs> if he could get some peanuts once a month, we were celebrating our life, you know. But then I saw God's kingdom. And that's a story in the Kingdom Economy book. So where you grew up, what you had in your life, what you experienced is not final your nest link what you need is a revelation that's what i said in the beginning kingdom living starts with the revelation so these books are loaded with the revelation and you get to read it at least five times i'm not telling you because it is given to me by the holy spirit so anybody else have any comments before we go to the next wonderful gift god brought to us all the way from south africa my favorite country in the world. <laughs> June Anderson, welcome, my sister. So, Jesse, God bless you. May the Lord help you build that business, the business world. Amen. Go into the business world and preach the gospel of the kingdom. Preaching means not preaching, but demonstrate. Live up yes. to the business world. And you don't have to say a word, create that influence by the gift, because your gift is a solution to somebody's problem. That's what we learned in the course, Discovering Purpose, Calling, and Gifts. God gave you gifts. That's a solution to somebody's problem. And when their problem is sold, they will pay you. That's how the kingdom provision comes to you. So thank you so much. And may the Lord continue to bless you and your family. So June Anderson, we are so blessed to have you with us. Everybody gets 20 minutes, okay? I should have said that in the beginning. But I'm not saying to limit your time, June. We want to hear everything God has put in your heart. She's a living miracle. And, and I want to hear what God is doing. She's teaching a course on health, a kingdom health care. I, I want to add you to our kingdom health care tribe. I'm waiting. So uh, thank you so much for what you're doing in the, um, you know, Recno Ethnos, GGA, and the whole world out here. In, in South Africa. So we want to thank God for you and the life and the testimony and the miracle that you experienced from him. So share with us what God has put in you and what God has called you to do. Let's welcome June Anderson. Thank you, Abraham. Are you able to make me host? I would like to share a PowerPoint if that's all right. You can. I already did it. You can share your screen. Okay, can I just press share my screen? Yes. Uh, right. There you go. Right. Okay. Um, let me just see. Right. Are you able to see that? Yes. Perfect. Right. Well, again, thank you so much for this platform, as everybody else has said it's I, I truly am grateful for this time and thank you for listening i am a teacher i've been a teacher for uh, almost 50 years 
and it's something that I love. And the Lord has changed my direction through the years. I taught in um, a Christian school for the last 26 years of my formal teaching. And then since then, I have been uh, teaching informally in a voluntary capacity in the township areas, the poor areas, areas of South Africa. Um, I have formed an NPC with two young men, my spiritual sons, beautiful young men. Um, they're called Wusi and Penwell. Uh, this was taken a few years ago. Uh, this, this man is Wusi and this man is Penwell. They are both now 34 years. And I have been working with them since, well, since with Wusi since uh, 2014 and with Penwell a few years after that. We have actually formed, if you don't, I don't, hope you can see this, uh, uh, the, the word Ebokusini means royal family in Indabeli. South Africa has 11 official languages and both Vusi and Penwell are Indabeli's. We have uh, our company, I'm going to just go back just to show you. I got so excited about what Jerry spoke about today. Can you see our, uh, our mission is building, build, building kingdom communities? And can you see this building communities one family at a time? So we are involved with that. And the main um, program that we are using is called Smart Life. And it's a kingdom sexuality program that has been developed over a period of about 30 years by Dr. Darlene Edwards Mayer. And I have been involved with her in um, helping her to put the program together and so on since about 2004. So we've uh, walked a long way together and Wussi and Penwell are trained facilitators as well. And we have been working in the townships since 2015, presenting her program. So sexual wellness is part of the healthcare. And I love what Jerry was saying, we, they, we need to change the area of sexuality in this world. And I believe this program is God's answer to that. It's a program that covers uh, the, parent uh, the parent training in the area of sexuality, how to bring their children up in the ways of God, um, and teach them sexuality from birth, what God says about sexuality. And it also, it talks about image and, and so on. So it's, it's a wonderful program. Then there's a youth program. There's a youth leadership program as well. I'm going to put your website picture up at the end of the program. You can just see it. And it's, it's the most marvelous program. And the Lord's actually only released it now, um, this year. So that's quite a long story, which I can't go into at this time. But there's parent training, sexuality workshops, work, workshops, facilitator training, facilitator peer leadership. And we also deal with sexual abuse and pornography and, and that as well. Um, the... I just before I go on to the rest of my healthcare program, the other side, which God's only released this virtually this month. Um, I, I've waited a long, long time for that one. But I just want to tell you a little bit about the, the we've each got different giftings, but we are all teachers and we are coaches as well. We've been trained in, to be coaches. So um, we are uh, able to to teach uh, our 
NPC is a training facility. We want to work with the church in the communities to present God's kingdom principles in all areas of life that he's called us to. So Penwell is a community leader and he works with 30 ch churches in the area of Mamalodi in um, South Africa. And he, uh, he and Vusi each have a, their own little church. Penwell has got an aftercare school program and uh, he do, does food gardening. He's doing wonderful work there. And especially in the COVID time, he set up food gardens and so on. Uh, Vusi has um, a, a real gift in the area of coaching and he works in the schools regarding uh, we uh, in, uh, regarding career guidance, but we all have done the sexuality program. That was our prime program. Then um, he's also um, helping with um, translation of programs as well. So he's also a very talented man. I just love my two sons. I could boast about them all day. Um, then Oopsie, sorry, I'm jumping the gun there. And I just loved what Jerry said is that we have a ministry for men. And we've been doing that also for a couple of years. But we lost our ECD uh, in the Rafelwi area where Vuli, Vusi works. But the Lord restored it through another organization that we uh, is, allows us to use their center now. And I'll show you pictures of that. And there we've got the food gardening aftercare ECD center, and they are specializing in ministry for men, uh, especially in the area of entrepreneurship. So I'll quickly show you that. I want to first of all show you our. Uh, um, Smart Life program for teens. It's a wonderful program. Now you can see in that photo the fun that they have while they're learning. They're doing a rap there. And um, we uh, the whole program is called Smart Life Movement, but the section for, called Smart Choices is our program that we use for young people and even for parents, etc. Um, they, can you see, they, it's very active and they do all sorts of fun things while they're learning. Um, this is just some of the, the illustrations and the, the, the different experiences we give them as they are learning and having fun. This is a, a Penwell's Community Center. He started, we had no, we lost money in different places. I lost my pension and all sorts of things over the years. We've had a few difficulties in that area. So when Penwell started in 2018, he just bought scrap and he put together, he was uh, given a piece of land in a very uh, new area where there was no water, no electricity or anything. And he's just put together a, care center, just like that. That's what it looked like. And he was still able to hold church services and the municipality even started using his center to hold meetings in it. And now this is the current status of our community center, care center. Um, this is what it looks like today with their uh, food gardening and all sorts of things. That's, that's a picture of the food gardening, gardening, and they've got a whole big garden club and they go and establish food gardens in the schools and teach the children how to, to establish food gardens in small spaces in their own homes. They, they even give these, these are very poor children. They would have been on the street in the afternoons if Penwell hadn't done this. They give them a meal it's amazing how God supplies that money for these children to have a meal. They get, we get books and diaries and all sorts of things sponsored, even shoes. And this is possibly the first time these children have ever had shoes, new shoes. 
and even uniforms. And this is uh, just another picture when they got some sponsored shoes. And then this is the organization who part, whom we've, it's not an official partnership, but they allow us to use their facilities. And they've got a wonderful, wonderful program. They've got a brick making factory there. They've even got a, a panel beating business and they teach people to, especially men, they focus on men. Men come off the streets and they, they get restored and they're taught a skill. And then they um, are become useful, uh, productive members and they can start feeding their family. And the, the, the whole um, self-esteem is restored and it's just wonderful. And these men are, are, are used to build th uh, or all kinds of different things on this property. It's all built by those bricks can you see those bricks? Those are those ones. That is built by men who had no skill before, and they they even make the bricks. And this is this is the ECD center that they've got, and they've got a com computer center where they're trained in computer skills as well. And this is the man Russell and his wife um, who run that whole center. And this is what they do. They actually work on real cars spray paint and fix cars up, et cetera. So uh, they, first of all, when people, men come in, they find what their passion is, what, what God has created them for, and then they train in, them in those different skills. Now, I, I just, I'm hoping this is going to work. Just last Saturday, I went out um, to Vus, with the area where Vusi lives, and actually Penwell lives close by too. And this is where we were at the center. And I just wanted to show you some of my uh, of the leaders. These young men at the back and there, I've had them in my youth group since they were in grade nine, and now they've all left school, but they still work with us, lovely young people. So I just want to show you the energy that they have. And I'm, I'm hoping it's going to work, but it, it might not. <laughs> we'll just see. Um, if I can just see if I can do the, I'm going to stop sharing here and see if I can, can go back to the screen share. And I'm going to, I don't know if it's going to work, but let's just try because I'd love to show you this video. Just click play. Them. I think it should play. Are you able to see it? Yes. Okay. I think that. Hey, Steve, we just wanted to say thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, uh, Steve. In South Africa, we say Steve Bobo. So thank you, Steve Bobo. We really appreciate it. Um, yeah, we just wanted to, to do a mini dance for you, just to appreciate you. We, we love your energy, by the way. So let's mean a big, that same energy for you. Thank you. So, yeah. I like it, move it, move it. I like it, move it, move it. I like it. So I'm going to go now back to my PowerPoint uh, there. Right, I couldn't get it to work on my PowerPoint. Uh, so now I just want to tell you about my refire ministry, which I have, the Lord's only re released me now after many, many years. And I got so excited last, no, it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, Abraham, when you mentioned about the soul, because the Lord spoke to me, I was focusing on the diet and the body and even on exercise, but I had not thought about the health of the soul. And then the Lord spoke to me about that. And he gave me this exact scripture, which you shared with us and uh, where you, you actually said uh, that we, our body can't prosper we can't prosper in our health until our, the health of our soul prospers 
So the, the Lord's led me on quite a path there. And I've done quite a lot of research and study on um, the, the mind and the soul and the healing of the soul, etc. This book, Soul Keeping, is the most wonderful book by John Ortberg. I've read it so many times and underlined it, and I would highly recommend it to anyone. Um, it, it, he was mentored by Dallas Willard. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but he has some wonderful concepts in there. And uh, I just wanted to share this quickly with you, with what, what he said. I don't want to take too long. But um, this man, Dallas Willard, um, shared this. Now, we, we can't see the soul. It's invisible to the human. So I'm just using graphics. We don't really know what the soul looks like but we know it exists. And I've always seen the body and the soul within the body, but he's seen the body within the soul or keeping it together. And uh, so that is the soul, uh, uh, the soul part, which is the mind and the will. And then the body is something somewhere in there. So there's incredible integration with all the aspects of the human being. Um, the spirit later you will come there. But I wanted to just share this with, with you. This is what he says. The soul is the capacity to integrate all the parts of us into a single whole. The soul seeks harmony, connection, and integration. The human soul seeks to integrate our will and mind and body into an integral person. Beyond that, the soul seeks to connect us with other people, with creation and with God himself, who made us to be rooted in him, the way a tree is rooted by life's giving stream. So this is why the soul is so important. We can't neglect it. And I've done a lot of studying of Dr. Caroline Leaf's work. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with her. Oh, she is a wonderful scientist and she connects what she's learned with the scriptures. And I just love what she teaches. And she's given a lot of advice on how we can heal our souls. So many people, especially since COVID, have all be, are work, walking around with wounds in their soul, which they need to deal with. And we need to do, deal with it on a scientific basis at the same time as a spiritual basis. We have to marry the two because God's given us this information now. So this is just my interpretation of the mind. The, we can't see the mind, but our mind is our aliveness. When, our, when we die, our brains still remain in our body, but our minds and our spirits leave. And they've actually discovered that our mind, when it leaves, the body lay, weighs less after we die because our mind and our spirit go. So we don't know how big the mind is, exactly how much it weighs, but Dr. Caroline Leaf says, our spirits uh, make up a, over 90% of our being. Uh, so this is why we should be focusing on our spirits and our souls even more than our body, but they're so interconnected. We can't restore our bodies without, restore, without restoring the soul. So um, she says that our minds consist of spirit and soul together. The spirit is the part that connects with God, the wisdom. But the soul is the messy part of, of, of the, um, the mind. because uh, And it's not bad. It, that's the part that we have to um, use to take control to, of, of our minds and our thoughts, etc. And so this is just what I've done here, and it might not be absolutely correct, but I just, I'm a visual person, and I like to see it, it in graphic form. So um, that's just a representation. 
Now, what happens? We process life through our minds. Whatever happens to us comes into our minds, and then our minds actually store this. This is sent to the brain, and it's stored. And the brain has what uh, neurons in the every thought is like a, a a tree, or every experience. It's a thought tree. And if we, when we have good thoughts, our trees in the brain that are stored there are, look healthy. But when we have toxic thoughts, they might look like that. And we've got to learn to reprogram those toxic thoughts because every single thought that gets stored in the brain is sent to our bodies. And this is why about 90% of our um, diseases, over 90%, over have their roots in toxic thoughts that have not been dealt with. So Dr. Caroline Leaf actually gives, takes us through a process of reconceptualizing. Now, this is so you've got to identify the, the toxic fraud, look for the underlying cause, redesign the thought, and I, I might, hopefully I'll have time to tell you about that. And then you've got to practice a new way of thinking. As the, the word says, take every thought captive. We can't just push thoughts down and just suppress them. We've got to take them captive, deal with them, and reconceptualize so that, that that starts becoming less powerful and the memory that is associated with that will be um, less painful and the sting gets taken out of it. So it doesn't no longer harms us. So these traumatic experiences get dealt with and then it eventually turns into a tree like that. Now, there's something else that the, uh, that we've, they only discovered about the human body in 2000, no, yeah, no, 1999. They discovered that the, there's a nerve that comes down from the brain and the nerve endings end in the, the intestinal area called the microbiome. And so this is where this is linked. And this is called, now called the second brain. And that's where the emotions actually originate. And when we have, a, 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 and the, this brain, this brain tells or sends it the message to the cognitive brain. And uh, tells it how to interpret these emotions. So we've got to learn to you to uh, our no, our emotions are signals. When we get a uh, like a emotion, a fear or whatever, or we've got um, have some toxic emotions, it's a signal that we've got to deal with it. We can't just suppress it. And this is what uh, she teaches that, and it actually takes a process of 63 days. So I'm not going to go uh, further into that, but that's, that's part, in my course, I take people through a journey in that. While they are actually um, doing the, oh, I just wanted to say something else, something that I forgot, and I don't know if I can actually, um, draw it. But this is, we, we know the human heart is not the same heart that is talked about in the, I don't, I, I'm not very good at drawing in with this thing. But that actually, I think, is what the Bible talks about, the heart. And it's part of there. So we call, we've talked, we, we hear to rivers of living water flowing from our bellies. So this, this whole thing where, where we learn to actually operate from the spirit here with, the, with all those, <laughs> everything's interconnected. Mm. And, and this is where if we can start guarding our hearts, guarding our thoughts, 
keep uh, um, every not allowing ourselves to respond in a negative way. So everything that comes across our path, our bodies are wired for love. We've got to learn to just automatically build the habits that respond in love. So I got very excited about this Damn. when I saw, saw this. And you see, when we do this, we, we heal relationships. We heal, um, our bodies get healed as well. So many diseases will get healed when we are responding and thinking in love as well. So this, and it so excited me when I heard about uh, what Jerry was talking about, the family and the restoration. So this is quite a holistic re restoration of the human being in, in this there. Yeah. So, um, I'm, I'm, yeah, yes. How much, how much more time do you need? Um, well, look, I, I, I think <laughs> I'm at the end, I haven't even touched on the other, but I don't want to take too much time, but I want to just quickly tell you about the, um, this is the, first of all, this is the, the website where we've got the sexuality. So this is the sexual wellness. Our sexuality is so important, uh, who we are, etc. And that's what we deal with. Now, the refire side is, is the, the soul and all, all that there. And it just the, the, the food side, I want to just quickly just mention that. If I can have another five minutes. Actually, June, we need to have you back to teach on this because this is not, <laughs> the, this is not the opportunity to teach about it. I know you want to teach because yes. you're a teacher. It just flows out yes. of you. And we will yes, definitely yes. have you back yes. to teach us this yes. material, what God is yes. doing through you. Yes. But I will yes. give you like two more minutes because we have to go. Oh, and, oh. And oh yes. Okay, well, I can actually stop now. Just, just to mention that we've been lied to with regard to diet um, all since the 1950s. And our body, the babies are born in ketos, ketosis, and our bodies are meant to burn fat, not carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And we've so um, uh, our uh, my program helps people transition to a, a fat burning fuel instead of a carbohydrate, and they have much more energy. Brain fog is got take goes etc and um and they 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 are it also reverses diseases like um diabetes and so on so that's that's what i have to say so thank you so much for listening and for the opportunity thank you thank you so much for sharing with us this is amazing i don't know how you do all these things june this is what god is doing through you two things the holy spirit highlighted me what you're doing for the people in South Africa, God wants to take it beyond South Africa to Botswana, to Zimbabwe, to Zambia, mm. because they yes. need that. And God, yes, is going yes. to, God is going to expand your territory to these countries because this, the time has come. And the second mm. thing the Holy Spirit put in my heart is about the area of finances, God wants to give you financial breakthroughs because you need it to take this what yes. the assignment God mm. has to mm. do. Mm. And Amen. the third thing is we want, I want you to come back to teach on that, the diet course that you're teaching now uh, that you showed a couple of pages in the beginning. And I know you're teaching to the GGA now. We want to have you come back and teach us because the gut health is so important mm. for us mm. brain everything functioned based on how our gut is healthy and most of the mm. time we ignore it and sometimes why people don't know why they feel depressed or what is happening in their life because mm. their gut is not healthy and god mm. has taken through you that process and the training given you that gift and the grace to teach that and let's talk about it when is a good time, maybe the next few months or so when we finish this finding our tribe process, I want to come back and teach us that. And also, I want to present it to the whole body here, the whole family, if the Holy Spirit 
puts in your heart to sow a financial seed into what June is doing in South Africa and beyond, please do that. Because of your generosity, we were able to sow $2,400 to Philippines. We sent that gift. They're buying the things there to start the kingdom school. We bought a more land in Zambia recently, two weeks ago, for the kingdom farming there. And we are making a difference. So I feel like if anyone is led to sow a seed, financial seed into what June is doing, I felt that we need to participate in it. We're supposed to sow a seed into her calling, into her assignment, what God is doing right now in South Africa and beyond. So please go to the website, thekingdomnetwork.org slash donate choose international mission. And if you can live June Anderson, her name there, come in there. I will make sure that we get that uh, seed into her, to her because of what God is doing through her. We believe in your vision, June, what God is doing in you and through you. And we want to stand with you in reaching more people there. So thank you. Anybody has any questions or comments, feedback for June? Yeah, this course is a supplement for me, a mental health caregiver. Thanks, June. Hope the slide you were presenting can be shared. See, the door is already open. Zambia is already open, June. And, and Botswana is going to open. And Zimbabwe is going to open for you because it's the time to go <laughs> beyond your boundary of South Africa because God wants to do that. So don't hold back. Thank you. Yes, uh, Jerry... Ken and Lori and Simone. June, I love the format that you have in, in, in this training course. And there's just, it's so rich of information and opportunity to give the people there and everywhere else that you teach. And I see this thing really going far, helping a lot of folks. So thank you for your heart and, and what God has done in you and with you thus far. And we'll be praying for you. Now, if we wanted to sow to give in, into what you're doing, how do we do that? Um, well, I think we can just, uh, if you, it, it could go through um, Abraham. Otherwise, I, I can uh, give you our, our Ibo Cassini account. So I don't know. Okay. Well, you want to go directly to her, give directly to her. That's fine with me. If you can leave that website or something on the chat box, what is Ebo Kosuni means actually? Did you explain that? It means it means royal family. Royal family, yes. 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 Excellent. Um, well, I must just see if I can just see if I can get that up before um, on, on the chat box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so next, Lori, please. Oh, hi, uh, just real quick. I, I noticed on the soul book that under the title is Henry Cloud, and he, he helped me so much in my past. He's like a counselor. Um, he's excellent. And also, I have two of the books. I have Dallas Willard, Renovation of the Heart, Fantastic, hmm. fantastic book. And I have Carolyn Leaf, who switched off my brain. So <laughs> you're good. You're good. You got the people behind you. <laughs> and I enjoyed it so much. It was so professionally done and so beautiful mm -hmm. what you're doing. Thank you so Thank you. much. You're welcome. Simone, are you there? Thank you so much. It was so interesting. And I really love uh, Caroline Leaf as well. And she's been in, uh, to Germany. Um, and I, I heard her sermons about the brain, exactly what Laurie was talking about, that book she was talking about it. It's amazing. And it's uh, really a, a huge eye opener. And I have a question. I don't know how your timetable is, um, June because we have Women's Month in March 
and we have each week we have a, a, a lady, a guest speaker sharing. Um, and uh, I would like to, I don't know about your timetable, yes. Uh, if you're okay on the 30th of, of March, or 31st, sorry, 30th. Yeah. Simone, you got disconnected. No audio is coming for some reason. So you can connect with her through the Ecclesia, but I don't think June is there yet. I'm waiting for her number. Uh, uh, can you hear me now? Is it okay? Yes. Now yeah, I, I, yes, I think, uh, how, how will we connect, uh, Simone? Um, I don't know. Are you in the WhatsApp group? Yes, I am. Okay, so I, I'll, I'll get in touch with you over the WhatsApp group, so I will not take any more time off here because I want to hear Laurie speaking. I'm waiting for yes. this. Yes. So, so, such a blessing. So 31st, uh, uh, Ilona posted it in the chat. So it's the yes. the 31st yes. of March, it's a Wednesday. Is a Wednesday, and what yes. time is, is um, it? Uh, I think South Africa is like one hour ahead or behind. I'm not sure from Austria. So we have Austrian time. This is to eight o'clock. Oh, okay, so, so it's about okay. nine. We'll, we'll deal. Yeah. We'll deal with that. So is that thirtieth or thirty? Thirty first is a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Okay, because uh, yeah, sure. I've got th Thursday there. Anyway, yeah, we'll, 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 so I think we're blocking the group. Okay, I get in yes, touch okay. with you and we do it like this. Thank All you right. so much. And I've got, I put it on the chat group so you can. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you for June. Thank you for sharing. May the Lord continue to bless you. As I said, beyond South Africa, it's happening now. Not next month, mm -hmm. not six months from now, <laughs> but God is all you open the door. It's your season. Mm -hmm. Flow into it in Jesus' name. And may the Lord bring the financial backup that you need to mm -hmm. fund those projects in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have Ken and Lori with us. My goodness, this couple has been with me for I don't know how many years now, <laughs> being a partner mm -hmm. of the ministry. Mm -hmm. since i don't know 10 years over than 10 years maybe so thank god for you ken and lori thank you for your commitment your faithfulness and your faith faithfulness you know you're full of faith mm -hmm. somebody shared um their vision or what god put in there that you're always there to support to encourage to build up your exalter and the gifts that god has put in your life so we thank god for you so we can wait to hear. So please, this is your time. This is your opportunity. The mic is yours. Okay. Well, um, uh, as you know, uh, we've talked about a little bit before that um, the area in which we uh, uh, believe that the Lord has called us to be involved in is the uh, area of arts. And uh, so we would like to um, present to you today just a little uh, uh, bit of a Turn around. Go ahead. <laughs> Just a, uh, uh, it'll basically show you a lot of the, the, the photographs and uh, with some beautiful music with it. Um, uh, our goal uh, is still in how to use this uh, practically is still trying mm -hmm. to be, work we're kind of still working that out uh, with the Lord. We're not 100% sure. Uh, but maybe after you see this, uh, you, I think, will uh, th um, see that, um, you know, art, art in itself is uh, something that we need to uh, keep in this world and um, along with all of the other things that uh, we have uh, <clears throat> going on. Uh, it's, uh, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice break. So uh, what we'll do is we'll show, it's a little <clears> bit different. We have uh, all the pictures and the music on a different computer. So okay. I'll let Lori explain that a little bit. Go ahead. Okay. All right. I was praying for weeks about what I'm supposed to do, what we're supposed to do. No answer, no answer, no answer. And I was about ready to give up. I'm like, uh, my art stuff is in the past. <laughs> I don't know how to do technology. And you'll find out that out today that 
we don't have the computer set up the way it's supposed to. But at the last minute, like yesterday, oh, uh, the Holy Spirit gave me an idea and kind of threw it together. <laughs> so just bear with us and um, hopefully it'll, you'll get a little story out of it, I guess. So I'm glad he's speaking because I'm terrible at that. No. So should, can we try it? We can't connect, you know, share the screen because it's on my old computer. So I'm going to just turn it. Yeah, yeah, we'll just right. basically I'll turn the uh, computer that you're looking at me at uh, mm -hmm. to the other one once Lori has it all set and ready to all go. Right. And we'll just play that and give you all a little you idea. And uh, so here we go. We're going to get started. Can, I, can everybody see that? Wait, let's get it bigger. Okay. Yes, kind of, but kind of. Either. Oh, Oh, you want the second one? Probably bored.
Well, I hope everybody was able to see that and hear that okay. It wasn't quite like uh, we had hoped to be able to do, but hopefully the next time we have anything like that to share, we'll be able to do it on the share screen. It'll be a lot more uh, uh, easier to maybe see and hear. Um, one of the things I know when I first met Lori, uh, I, I really uh, in, admired her uh, use of um, black and white photography. I'm not a, I'm not a photographer myself, but um, the way that uh, things seem to be able to be uh, expressed through the, uh, through that. And one of the things that Lori had done when I first met her, uh, working with a friend of hers was to uh, publish a book called uh, Journey. Journey of Faith. And it has in it um, all of Lori's uh, uh, photographs and uh, along with that, there are there's a poem that is in a scripture uh, in a scripture that go with that particular uh, my friend. photograph and uh, with her friend, uh, yes, Karen. So um, that's been that was published in 2012, and it's uh, an area that's been quite a passion of of hers, and um, we hope to. Um, we hope to use uh, this calling to uh, further uh, uh, enlighten people to the uh, the art world. And uh, okay. um, that music was by a um, Christian piano player. Um, actually, um, Trina probably knows Brett. Yeah, um, yeah. There was a that was from he's uh, from a church, our former church. Right. So, I don't know. So, yeah, as Abraham said, where I know we're, uh, we'll make it kind of quick because we're it. probably running short on time. Um, just want to say that, yeah, we have known him for a very long time. I know the first book that, that I read, the very uh, uh, of his, just it, it changed the way I had looked at all the other courses and uh, the religious spirit and everything just it just made so much more sense and um so that's why i always encourage various books that we have here and and uh, hopefully you get a chance to read those and maybe we can do a little um uh photographic docuseries on the ecclesia people from all over the world <laughs> yeah yes Anything? that's a good oh, idea i don't know then Send pictures, send pictures of different countries, sceneries. That's good. That's their to, story. Send it to story. Like the Zambia story or the Netherlands story or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's just inkling. I have no idea. I'm pictures. glad he's talking. Pictures with stories. So send it to Lori and Ken. We are going to put it on the art stripe on WhatsApp. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Thank you, Kelly. That was amazing. You know, the arts, you know, it's not everybody enjoys arts. Some people, you know, different people have interest in different things. So, but with the gift and the calling God has upon your life is very important and we need it, you know. So thank you, Lori, for even leading the arts group, you know, the arts tribe on WhatsApp. Keep it up. And the more is coming, actually, God is going to take you guys to more uh, deeper into that, how to bring life into arts and bring kingdom through arts and media or celebration. So thank you so much for sharing that. Anybody has any questions or comments for Ken and Lori?
Somebody said, I am also a photographer. I would like to learn from you some photography skills. I think that is James, maybe. Is that James? You're the one, James? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so willing to learn. Oh, Lori, here's a student for you. <laughs> we can hear you. Your mic is muted. James, I need you to teach me technology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a deal. So he will teach you technology and you teach him photography. <laughs> so that will be a win-win situation there. Sounds good. That's a good idea. <laughs> um, so thank you again. You know, mm -hmm. we have another meeting starting in 10 minutes. You know, Martin and Jillian there have their family Triumph meeting seminar for everybody, those who are willing to jump in again. So welcome at one o'clock Denver time. Um, anybody else have any comments or question for Ken and Lori? Lo uh, Simone, please. Oops, I just make it short. You just, you'd mentioned, I don't know, was it in the group or in one of the meetings? You just mentioned uh, how you've been delivered from the depression or a suicide some, or a, something and it touched my heart and that you, you said you had no or was it negativity or envy something like that you, you shared that Laurie yeah? I don't know how many minutes are left but I love I was waiting to hear your testimony I thought I would hear your testimony today so that would be encouraging Lori, your mic is muted, so we can't hear anything you're saying. I'm too nervous. <laughs> so Ken's the nice, calm talker. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I can't really speak to that. I know that Lori does. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but I'm not going to get into the, your testimony. She'll have to share that when she's ready to do so. Leave it at that. Actually, to be honest with you, you both are wonderful speakers. I don't know what you're talking about. You both are amazing speakers. Everything you say, even Lori, after people share, you leave those comments and encouragement. Oh my goodness, nobody can do what you're doing, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Good. So you both are amazing speakers. And, and let's lift that, whatever mindset or something, you know, you have that capacity, you have the gift in you. Mm -hmm. So may the Lord bless you and bring more out because we need you the body of christ needs you what god has put in you and don't let the enemy cover that up because of whatever reason or whatever thinking we need you both hands wide open we need you in the body of christ in the ecclesia so father healing <laughs> yeah in jesus name Okay, um, Linton, I saw your hand for a minute. Did you put you down or you're down or? Yeah, um, I was just um, listening to Ken and Laurie just now and watching the, the, the audio. You guys are hearing me, right? Yes. Yeah, um, I'm seeing even further development taking place where God is going to take that. Uh, to minister to people in that particular arena there. Like I could see in the future, you know, those same um, background going with nice music, but there's encouraging words yeah. be, that, yeah. that God put them inside of your heart, prophetic words. Mm -hmm. They'll be flashing across the screen that will bring encouragement to people along the path. Mm -hmm. I was also thinking in terms of my own poetry where yes. that background there, along with some of the, the, the prophetic mm -hmm. poems I've written yes. um, combined together is yeah. able to be uh, ministered to the whole body of Christ as a people not even saved. Because what went through my mind is there's a lot of people that are, that are struggling with insomnia and different things in the world right now, and they need something to get them to relax. Mm -hmm. And what you created there was something to relax and bring peace to the peace of mind. And mm -hmm. I think even if there's a little bit of wording encouragement there, or if there's mm -hmm. um, scriptures going across, it will help people to just relax and be yeah. calm. And that's yeah. what I see with that. Uh, you might say it is boring, but to me it's not. Because I myself, you know, in the times when I just need to relax, I want to hear nice music. I want the scenic background going in the background with nature and things like that. I just want that. 
Mm. And that's where I, I, I um, interact with God the most. It's not so much all the nice, most popular songs that are there that are out there, but it's just being a place of quieting my spirit. And that's what I see you're able to create with that, to quiet someone's spirit that they can just relax and be at peace. And I think that's where healing and transformation and a whole bunch of stuff will take place with the midst of that. So that was going through my mind as I listened and I watched what you were doing. And yeah, there may have been some technolo technological challenges, but beyond that, I'm seeing that God is going to do that. God is going to use that in ways that goes beyond the human comprehension to minister to people from all spectrum of life in the midst of this busy world, especially since the world is going into a place where it's very technological in every aspect. Yeah. That's where that is be developed to infiltrate that world. Mm -hmm. Lyndon, I just want to tell you that I, I know Ken mentioned the book, but that's what we had. We had um, we had photos with po poetry it was in the book with scripture. So I would love, you know, that's a great idea to put your poetry on there. In music. In music. But beautiful. So. Amen. Hey, Lyndon, that book is going to be out pretty soon. Thank you, Lori. Um, Heather, I see your hand. So next week, please don't forget Linton, Martha, Martin and Jillian, Mercy, Wanchi. I don't know who that is, but Michael Smith and Minty will be sharing. So please note those names. And uh, so Heather, do you have something to share? Lori, I wanted to just confirm with Lyndon, um, as I was listening and watching that, I was just thinking of how I could use that in my in my coaching as I'm coaching Christians and creating space for them to be still and just even just start and learning what meditation is and learning to, to meditate on God's word, just having stuff like that in the background and available to them um, is a very, very useful tool um, and very, very powerful with that as well. Um, and so I just wanted to encourage you and, be a second witness to what Lyndon was getting that I was getting that same thing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Appreciate it. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. This was a wonderful, wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, nighttime, whatever you are. Some, some of you already into the next day here. So thank you so much for everyone who shared. Appreciate you. Bless you. Have a wonderful, glorious week. I will see you next week. Next week, you have a wonderful group of people, Linton and Martha and Martin and Julian and Michael and Minty. So they will be sharing with us tomorrow, next Sunday. I can't wait to hear from them. So Father, we thank you for what you have done today. We bless you. We give you all the glory. We pray a blessing and favor and strength upon everyone who shared, Father, new doors to be open, new connections through the ecclesia, outside of ecclesia, Father. I thank you for connections and open doors and provision to come to fulfill their assignment. I thank you for the calling and the gifts that you placed upon them, Father. We are in this process. Everyone is in different pace and speed and in different seasons of our life, Father. I thank you for providing what we need for this season. Give us this day our daily bread, emotional, spiritual, and physical and healing, restoration, I speak, Father. We thank you for what you're doing through us, through the ecclesia. We love you, we honor you. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. Have a wonderful, glorious week. I will see you next Sunday, same time, same place. And have an amazing week in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye. God bless you. I will see you next week. <laughs>